boys and girls. I hope you've had a good week. We're gonna continue our lessons in Acts now and hear some more about this man named Paul that I told you was such a great missionary. But before we do, let's sing about what he was telling people, that they had been sinking in sin, but God loved them so much. He sent a way for them to be saved, just like he has. We know that message. So sing with me. You know love lifted me, and that, that love was Jesus. So sing with me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. And boys and girls, that's the message. We want to share that only love, only Jesus can save us from our sins. And that's what our next hymn is about. And we haven't sung this hymn before. Some of you may know it from Big Church. And if you know it, sing it with me. If not, we're going to sing it a second time. So you might just listen the first time if you don't already know it. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves Jesus saves, spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward tis the Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. And tidings, it simply means good news, the good news about Jesus. That's what they mean when they say spread the tidings. So spread the good news. And when they say climb the steeps and cross the waves, that means that if you need to climb a mountain or cross the ocean, but we know our mission field is right where we live, in our homes and in our neighborhood, on the playground, at the swimming pool, wherever we are, and we meet people, we need to share Jesus. So sing with me. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward tis our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. We'll be singing that some more as we talk about sharing the gospel because that's the message we want to share is that Jesus is the only way. People back then and people even today, some of them thought that by keeping all the Ten Commandments and doing every law, um, right, doing everything right, doing good deeds for people, that this was what would save us. But boys and girls, we know God's Word has told us in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We can't keep these laws by ourselves. The only way is to ask Jesus into our heart. And we were told that God loved us so much, for God so loved the world, that he sent his only son to save us from our sins. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Because boys and girls, Romans 6, 23 says, if we do not accept Jesus, if we don't confess our sins, remember 1 John 1, 9, confess, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins. But we're told in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. That means if we do not confess our sins, if we do not ask Jesus in God, but then it goes on to have good news for us. But if we do, the gift of God, that's what John 3, 16 was talking about. The gift of God is eternal life 
in Christ Jesus. Those words are very important, those three words. In Christ Jesus, we must ask Jesus into our hearts. And this is the message that Paul was trying to share with other people. Remember we met Paul last week and he had been persecuting the Christian, but then Jesus came into his life one day as he was traveling, that bright light knocked him to his knees and he was blinded. And then one of the followers of Jesus told him about Jesus and that he needed a savior. And Paul gave his life and completely changed from the outside and the inside because he was a new person. God's word tells us that when we ask Jesus to come into our heart, we become a new person. And that's what happened to Paul. Well, let's see what's going to happen to him in our story today as he shares the message of Jesus. But first, let's ask God what he wants to teach us. You know, I told you these stories happened a long time ago, but God put them in the Bible so that we could learn from them what God wants us to teach us. And I think in our lesson today, he wants to show us that we need to share the gospel, just like Paul did, wherever we are. So let's pray and ask God to show us. Our hands we fold, our head we bow as we talk to God just now. Dear God, thank you for your true word, the Bible. Teach us from Paul's story today what you want us to know for our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, boys and girls, you remember Paul met up with Barnabas when uh, he had to leave the city of Jerusalem because some of the Jewish people, you see, some of these Jews that had studied the law, they thought that was the only way to be saved, and they did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah that the prophets had told would come. And so they were persecuting uh, all of those people that were trying to share the gospel. And so they were trying to kill Paul. So the believers helped Paul to get to safety. And they put him in that basket. And he crossed, uh, they put him down over the wall and he left. And in the story today, we see he had met up with these believers. And remember, some of them didn't trust him because they had heard all about Paul and how he had hurt uh, the Christians in the past. But Barnabas knew he had seen the new Paul, and he convinced the believers to let Paul share. And so Paul began, began to serve as a missionary. Well, Paul and his friend Barnabas are in a church in Antioch when the Holy Spirit comes upon them and chooses them for a special, special work. Well, first of all, Paul and Barnabas sail to Cyprus, to an island, and they stopped and they shared the good news with the people there. And some of the people believed and followed Jesus. But next they traveled back to the mainland and back to Antioch. And on the Sabbath day, Paul and Barnabas went to the synagogue and they were invited to speak and they told the people about Jesus. Well, the, that, that he was the only way, he was the only person that could forgive their sins. And so uh, Paul and uh, the people asked him, they liked hearing this good news. And they asked Paul and Barnabas to come back the next Sabbath day. They wanted to hear more. So the next week, Paul and Barnabas went back to the synagogue. It was very crowded. There were many Jewish people there, but there were Gentile people there too, people who were not Jews. And boys and girls, God had sent his word first to the Jewish people, but many of them were turning against um, the believers and were not following Jesus. They were not believing in anything but the law. And God, uh, so God said to them, um, the Jews um, were jealous and they began to argue with Paul and Barnabas and shouted at them. And it tells us right here in Acts, it says, um, this is what Paul said to them. We told God's message to the Jews first, but you refused to listen. Well, boys and girls, this was part of God's plan. You see, boys and girls, 
God is more powerful than anyone or anything, and his plans will not be um, put aside. And his plan was that the Gentile people would hear about Jesus too. So Paul and Barnabas were going to need to travel on. And so next, Paul and Barnabas went to a city called Iconium. And the same thing happened there. They began to speak in the synagogue. And many Jews and some Greeks believed the message about Jesus. But the Jews who did not stirred up more trouble. They planned to kill Paul and Barnabas. But Paul and Barnabas escaped and they traveled to a city called Lystra. And that while they were in Lystra, God gave them the power to heal a man who was lame. When the people saw this, they were so excited. They said, oh, you are God. Paul said, no, no, no. We are men just like you. And we want to tell you the good news of God. God's the one that gave us the power to do that. And then some people showed up from Antioch and Iconium while they were sharing here in Lystra. And they turned the people of Lystra against Paul and Barnabas. They dragged Paul and Barnabas out into the city, out of the city, and began to throw stones at them. They thought that they were dead, but the believers in Lystra gathered Paul and Barnabas, and they gathered around him and got him and took him back. And the next day, Paul and Barnabas went to the city of Derby, and they told people there about Jesus. And many believe, people believed. Then they went back to Lystra and Iconium and encouraged those people who had stayed true to the word and who were believers now. Well, finally, Paul and Barnabas went back to Antioch. This was the end of their first missionary journey. We will hear that Paul and Barnabas, or Paul, goes on other journeys later. But um, this is the end of their first journey. And they reported everything that God had done. They said, God is the one that has given us this power. And God is the one that has caused us to share the gospel. And um, this, and they were doing, obeying and doing just as God told them. Well, I ask you, are you obeying God? Remember we learned back when Jesus was teaching that he taught in Matthew 28, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And I told you before the story about how when Jesus ascended into the heaven, he gave them a helper. God in the third person, the Holy Spirit. Remember, he's God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit who comes to live in our heart when we ask Jesus to come into our heart. And so um, he has come to live in your heart if you've asked him, and he will give you the power to share the message. So I ask you, are you obeying that call from Matthew 28, 19, and 20? Go and teach the gospel, just like Paul and Barnabas did when they obeyed Jesus. If not, do that today. I ask you also, have you asked Jesus into your heart? If you have not, remember how we talked a minute ago, that we must confess our sins, and then what will happen? He will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you have not taken that next step and asked Jesus into your heart, talk to mom and dad, talk to Pastor Ron. Now is the day to do it. And you all that have asked Jesus, now's the day for you to share Jesus with others. Now let's have our popcorn praise. Our hands we fold, our head we bow, as we praise you just now. Dear God, I praise you as the sovereign God in control of all. You are my Savior. You are my Redeemer. You are my best friend. You're King of kings and Lord of lords. You're my provider. You're my protector. 
Lord, we could go on praising you forever, but now we want to thank you. We want to thank you for what you did on the cross. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree. From sin to set me free, someday he's coming back. What glory that will be, wonderful his love to me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Amen. Well, boys and girls, have a good day. I love you, and God loves you even more.